Good morning. The members of Faith Lutheran Church welcome you to the 8 o'clock broadcast of our worship service from the Faith Ministry Center Sanctuary. Today is our annual All Saints Festival service. Leading the liturgy this morning is Reverend Adam Bridgman. Preaching this morning is Reverend Aaron Rosenau. You may view or download a copy of the worship folder by visiting our website, www.faithfoxvalley.org. On the homepage, click on Resources, then Downloads for Participating Online. Today's folder is titled Traditional Worship Folder, All Saints 11.5. Click on the box with the cloud. We now join the service already in progress. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lord's house here in this uh, beautiful day. Um, We're celebrating All Saints Day. It's traditionally a time in our church when we remember all those who have gone before us and um, in this last year have gone to be with Jesus and are at rest with the Lord and awaiting the final resurrection. So we'll see um, on the screen here in just a little bit the names of those who uh, from our congregation here, our church family, have... um, have gone to rest with our Lord uh, from all the worries and uh, awaiting the final resurrection. Um, A quick note about that, if you have a family member that um, passed away in this last year, uh, there are some white roses in the back, at the back of the church, right next to the cross, the back by the stained glass windows, and you're welcome to take one of those roses with you as a commemoration of your loved one. This is also a communion Sunday, so we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper a little bit later, and we believe that we are very much in need of God's grace because we are sinners, and God offers us that grace in the very bread and the wine as he gives the body and blood of Christ to us in and with the, body, in and with the bread and the wine and uh, for our forgiveness. And so if that is your belief as well, we invite you to join us for the Lord's Supper a little bit later. 
Um, also, you know, we, you've been hearing us talk about this quite a bit uh, this year. We're in our 75th anniversary year here at Faith. In February, we'll be celebrating our 75th anniversary. And so a couple things with that. Um, we're going to be doing a new pictorial directory. And some of you go, oh, you know, <laughs> No, worry, no, you know, no pressure to buy pictures and all that. But just, we want you to sign up to get pictures taken for that. Um, so that's going to be happening starting this week. And uh, so take note of that in your bulletin announcements, um, how you can get signed up to get, have your picture taken. There's just quick time slots there. Also, next Saturday, we're going to have uh, what we're calling our Decades Dance or a dance over at our Celebration Ministry Center after our Saturday worship at 6.30. And an opportunity for us to celebrate all those decades. We started in the 1940s. So, you know, if you want to dress up like it's the 40s or the 50s or the 60s or the 70s, you know, then come and enjoy fellowship and a lot of fun. That will be Saturday at 6.30. And also with our 75th anniversary as we're celebrating All Saints Day, if you notice in the back of your worship folder, there are a few pages there. Um, there's a, a letter from our founding pastor, Henry Simon, who is with Jesus now, but um, was a founding pastor pastor of Faith Lutheran Church, and a couple other things with a timeline of historical highlights. Those three pages in the back of the worship folder were a part of a special uh, dedication worship service that happened here in 1966 as we dedicated this beautiful sanctuary and other parts of the building here. And so just note that that is obviously out of date because it happened in 1966, but just a great uh, commemoration of the space that we're in and, um, and the history that we're celebrating in this anniversary year. Last thing before we get started in worship, that is on the other side of the stained glass windows over there in our commons space is a Christmas tree. A lot of you know how this works. It's the giving tree. You could go and take a, an ornament off that. It has a description of something that is a need. And that is we're helping families that have been connected with VEDA, which is our crisis pregnancy and resource center here in the Fox Valley. And so those families are in need of certain items. And you take one of the ornaments and you purchase that item and you bring it back. Bring it back unwrapped, please. If you wrap it, we'll unwrap it <laughs> before we give it to, to Vita. But uh, bring those items back unwrapped and we'll uh, just bless a, a, a load of our families here in the Fox Valley who are in need of those services. And um, so um, out on, in the commons, you can find those ornaments and bring them back in the next couple weeks so that we can give those to the, to the families. That's the announcement I have for this morning. I invite you to stand as we begin with our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. As we gather together on this holy festival day to offer God our sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving, we are reminded of the great cloud of witnesses that have preceded us and who have shaped our faith. Let us celebrate God's presence and majesty with all the saints who are in glory with their Lord. Praise the Lord, all you saints. Praise him, all you heavenly hosts. Let us praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and all you patriarchs and prophets, Miriam, Ruth, and Naomi, Elizabeth, Mary, and all you holy women, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, James and John, and all you evangelists and apostles, Stephen, Thomas, Peter, and Paul, Philip, Bartholomew, and all you holy martyrs, these are the saints whose robes are washed white in the blood of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. We are the saints who are the living body of Christ, the church. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Today's opening hymn is Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones from Lutheran Service Book number 670. Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, bright seraphs, cherubim, and thrones, raise the glad strain, Alleluia. 
Cry out, dominions, princedoms, powers, virtues, archangels, angels, choirs. Alleluia, alleluia. saints are gifts from God. Their witness inspires us and encourages us to greater faith and service to the Lord. More than merely remembering those who have gone on before us, we give thanks to God for their lives and the honor of knowing and loving them for many years. We remember that saints are not perfect people, but rather redeemed children of our Heavenly Father who lived out their lives in response to His extravagant grace and gift of faith. With all the saints of heaven and earth, let us celebrate and commemorate our loved ones who have gone on before us.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have gone on before us into the heavenly mansions. Though they were by no means perfect, they were claimed as your children through holy baptism and declared righteous before your eyes by the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. Today, as we worship together, send your Holy Spirit upon us and replace our tears with hopeful joy found in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Comfort us, O Lord, as your beloved children, and grant us your strength and peace to press on toward the goal to win the prize for which you have called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> this time as we collect our offering, we just want you to remember how thankful and grateful we are for your givings and your offerings here to support our many ministries here at Faith. Today's offering hymn is for all the saints from Lutheran Service Book 677. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia.
For those joining us through our radio program or online stream, you may give by mail to the church office online at www.faithfoxvalley.org slash give or text to give at 920-280-1030. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our first reading comes from Revelation, the seventh chapter. I looked... And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. And I invite you to rise as you're able for our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. I tell you the truth. A time is coming and has come now when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, So he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. But myself, I can do nothing." I can judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
and as many members of one body, let's confess our common Christian faith here in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. In the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Years ago, I was doing a ministry internship in Minnesota, and there was a a man in our church family who died right before Easter. He had been battling cancer for some time, and he finally succumbed to the disease. And when he died, his wife was by his side, along with several of of their friends from the congregation who joined in praying over him and reading scripture together and singing hymns together even as he passed from this life into the arms of Jesus. Now, no kidding, just a week and a half after he passed away, his wife was in front of the congregation, not, not for his funeral, but for one of our regular worship services, and, he, and she gave this amazingly beautiful testimony about God's work in her life, right in the midst of all the the great pain that she was going through. And we, we actually had really a lot of doubt about whether she could speak so candidly when all the emotions were so fresh and raw. But there she was, perfectly calm and composed, And she said, I'll never forget this, she said, God is so very good, and he offers us such great hope. How does that happen? How does someone in the midst of such great loss and grief, whose world seems to be collapsing in around her, how could she stand and speak so powerfully and be so at peace? I want you to imagine this scene. Picture a white dove resting peacefully in a nest, eyes closed as if she had no worries in the world. But the nest is that she's lying in is, is balanced on a tree branch that's stretching very daringly, dangerously close to a massive waterfall. And the water's just pouring over the edge of that rock with enormous power and roaring to the bottom of the fall. And when it crashes, it's with unrelenting violence and thundering noise. It's creating a turbulent pool to begin at the bottom and a torrent of mist that rises up from the bottom of the falls. And if that's not enough, then the sky over, overhead, above this nest and above the waterfall, is 
thick storm clouds, lightning flashing across the sky, and the wind is threatening to generate damaging hail. Now against that ominous backdrop is this dove, undisturbed and at peace. That's the image of Lynn, this woman whose husband had just died. While everything is crashing around her, all looks dark and hopeless. She's at peace. This is also the picture of Revelation 7, which we read just a few minutes ago. The multitude of saints before the throne of God in their white robes washed clean in the Lamb's blood, and they're praising the Lamb, Jesus, and they're at peace. Never again will they hunger. God wipes away every tear from their eyes. But that peaceful scene is against the backdrop of something that's disturbing and chaotic. Now, you have to understand that the book of Revelation, the whole book of Revelation is is a vision. The Apostle John, one of the first followers of Jesus, was given the privilege of pulling back the curtain, if you will, and seeing the spiritual world that is going on all around us all the time. We just don't see it with our eyes. It's there, but it's hidden from our eyes. And John gets to glimpse it all. The angels and demons battling it out, and salvation's story played out before his eyes. Now, you could, you could open up your Bibles, and you could follow along quickly with this. You don't have to. You just trust me. And as I give a little backdrop for Revelation 7. Revelation 5, if you back up a little bit in the book of Revelation, Revelation 5 describes the ascension of Jesus Christ from heaven's point of view. It's like John gets to glimpse at what it looked like when the risen Christ ascended to heaven and took the throne of God. The Lamb of God, slain but risen, and, he's, and the Lamb of God is holding a scroll in his hand, a scroll that's, that's curled up and, and sealed up, closed with seven seals. And nobody is worthy of opening the seals except for the Lamb of God. And he opens those seals one at a time. He pulls the seal off to open up the scroll. And every single time he opens up one of those seals, then it unleashes what happens in the history of humankind. And it's a reminder that everything that happens on earth happens only through the sovereign power of God. Nothing happens apart from God's will and his acceptance. Jesus is in command of our history, no matter what comes. And then Revelation 6 describes what happens when he opens those seals. And much of it is chaotic and hard. It's the difficulties that come on the earth. There are the four horsemen that come out bringing warfare and plagues and famine, inflation and injustice, and even death. Now, this is not the end. We often think of it as the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but it's, it's really, it's not the end. This is just describing everything that has happened in history and is happening right now and will continue to happen to the very end of time. It's all building to the end. I mean, there are wars and famines and death and disease happening right now, has been for all of human history since the fall. But all that that's happening is like that turbulent flood at the bottom of that violent waterfall that's just churning and chaotic and unrelenting. That's chapter 6. The end will come as John briefly describes in chapter 8. But what comes between chapter 6 and chapter 8? Chapter 7. Yeah. <laughs> what happens in chapter 7? Well, in chapter 7, there's a pause. 
And John turns his attention away from all the chaos and the violence of the world, and he turns his eyes to the church. What's happening with the church of God? What's happening? While all this, the world is so violent and unsettled, the church of God is standing before the throne of God, washed clean of their sins by the blood of the Lamb, and they're praising God. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And they have no fear. As God spreads his tent over them and they, they're, they're not harmed by the sun or anything else. All the destruction that's happening on the earth, they're shielded from it. And God wipes away every tear from their eyes. In the midst of all that's happening in the world, and as the end draws near, like that white dove nestled on the branch, seemingly without a care in the world, the church of Jesus Christ is undisturbed by the roaring and churning and all the storms looming overhead. Now, let me pause there for a second. Let me say this about Revelation 7. The scene of the great multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. We often, you know, usually that's interpreted one of two ways. One is that this is a picture of the risen church at the final resurrection as the, at all believers stand before the throne of God. Or it's a picture of all those who have gone before us, right? The names that were on the screen here today and, and many others who have gone before us and, and are at rest with Jesus awaiting the final resurrection. I think it's actually a picture of both. It's a picture of those who are awaiting the final resurrection and at peace with Jesus in heaven. And it's also a scene of those who are raised from the dead and stand before the throne of God, giving him praise day and night. But I think it's also more than those two things. This picture of the great multitude is also a symbolic description of all of us. All of us who are living in faith right now in Jesus, still on the earth in the midst of all the trouble and pain and uncertainty, we are nonetheless washed clean and made white in the, in the blood of the Lamb. And we are at peace. Now, we, we aren't seeing this today, but we often do this when we have communion Sundays in our traditional services. Um, Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast. Remember that song? Yeah. It's, it's like all those words are straight out of Revelation 7. It's like we're joining already the song of the saints, joining with those who are already with Jesus because we are already with Jesus. With all the backdrop of the world and its chaos and pain, the unrelenting violence, and there we are also at peace. Many weeks ago, when we started this sermon series on the Hall of Faith, I asked those of you who were here in worship with us that week to memorize Hebrews 11.1. One. You remember that? Do you remember Hebrews 11.1? One? This is the real test. Not if you can remember that day, but if you can remember it eight weeks later, right? <laughs> What is Hebrews 11.1? 1? Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. Now I want to go for a second to our reading from the gospel, John 5. I always find this very interesting. Some of you have actually heard me emphasize this before. Jesus says, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me, what? has eternal life and has crossed over from death to life. Notice it's not will have eternal life, but 
has eternal life. When you have faith in Jesus Christ, you have already crossed over from death to life. God has come to you in baptism by the Holy Spirit and water, and he has given you eternal life, and you possess it right now, even if your eyes don't quite see it. You have it by faith. And faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. Your eyes see an aging, aching, sometimes wishy-washy, often weak, restless person who doesn't do all the things they should and does a lot of the bad we shouldn't. And yet your faith sees a new, perfected, redeemed, glorified, eternally loved, already rescued child of God. You are already standing with the saints of God in white robes, waving palm branches, shouting praise of salvation to our King. I mentioned earlier in our service that we're inviting you to take pictures for our new pictorial directory. And so, this week I was looking at some of our old pictorial directories. It reminded me, actually, 13 years ago, my family and I moved here to Appleton, and Faith was just in the process of finishing off a new pictorial directory, which was really amazing because when everybody is new, all the faces are new, it was really helpful. I would take out the, the directory, and when I met somebody, I would go home at night, and I would open, pour through it. I'd, I'd find that person and underline their name, and I would then I would review all the other names I had underlined. So I, when I saw a person the following week, I would be able to call them by name. I was just pouring over the directory. In a short amount of time, I was able to commit hundreds of families' names to memory. But even more than that, I was looking at the directories recently, I was realizing I haven't just gotten to know the faces and the names in the directory. I've gotten to know a lot of the stories behind those faces. Your stories. There's some painful stories. Stories of illness. Stories of things like cancer and divorce. There are those who are, even now, facing an uncertain future or trying to figure out why their teenager hates them. In this room right now, among those who are worshiping with us online, there are just, there's just about every form of pain and suffering you can imagine. The loss of a child, abuse, addiction, chronic pain, Shame from past decisions. You name it. But here's what else I've seen among the people of God here. Over and over in these last 13 years, I've seen faith. Faith. The people of faith showing their certainty that pain and loss do not get the last word. Yes, it hurts. This life is what John actually calls the great tribulation. The great tribulation is not something yet to come. It's what we're in right now. Life, it's hard, sometimes brutal. But Jesus says, I've overcome the world, so take heart. So I've seen husbands and wives losing a spouse, parents losing children. I've seen people facing crushing heartbreak, and yet they're not crushed because of faith. They know that this is not the end. Jesus will raise us to new life in our bodies just as we are already raised to new life in the Spirit. We have eternal life right now, and we are still waiting for that to be shown to us with our eyes. Once again, this is, this is the, the dove at rest against the backdrop of turbulence. The world is swirling about, threatening to destroy, but faith 
holds on to this promise, this assurance from Jesus, as Paul says it in Romans 8, there's nothing, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation that will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. I invite you to stand as we join together in prayer. Surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us bring our prayers before God's throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the church, a place where we can be strengthened by your word and sacrament, experience forgiveness, and further Christian relationships with brothers and sisters in Christ. Bless all those who lead us in worship and Bible study at faith and help us to grow deeper in our Christian faith. Lord of love. Heavenly Father, your children suffer from injustice, brokenness, and hardships of every kind all over the world. But you promise refuge and relief to all those who trust in your holy name. Expand your kingdom on earth and enable us to be your light in the dark places of this world. Lord of love. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who struggle with a variety of difficulties and illnesses. Especially, we pray for this morning for Marion Merkel, Pat Stilf, Jessica Angel's mom Janice, and Joel DePactor. We ask you to heal them according to your good and gracious will. Lord of love, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who have lost loved ones, especially in our prayers this morning. We remember. Ryan Angel and Don Smithland's father, who passed away, was called to his heavenly home this past week. Pastor Dan's Aunt Jenny Hinkins and Jeanette Pankow, Jean Weber's sister, who were all called to their heavenly homes this past week. We ask you to walk with their families. Give them the promise in their hearts that we heard in Revelation, the saints that gather around your throne, and that one day we will see our God face to face. Lord of love, we lift up our into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy to do even more than we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved children of God, we rejoice to be numbered with all the saints, the great cloud of witnesses, before receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion. Let us approach his table of grace with contrite hearts, and confess our sins. Almighty God, we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in others, in thought, word, and deed. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. By God's grace, your sins are forgiven. You are declared righteous because of Jesus' saving work on the cross. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In heaven and on earth and with all the saints, we unite around your throne of grace to proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for the redemption that you have prepared for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, help us to faithfully eat and drink of these holy sacraments that come to us through Jesus' sacrificial love displayed on the cross. May these gifts of grace Help us to remain steadfast in the one true faith until we can celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb with all the saints in heaven. Amen. 
And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and he said, Take and drink. This is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. <clears throat> Beloved children of God, who are called to be saints, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. And take a moment to share God's peace with those around you. The members of the congregation are greeting one another in the name of the Lord, saying, Peace be with you, as a sign of reconciliation and of the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. May the peace of the Lord also be with those of you in our radio and online listening audiences.
We thank you for joining us for today's worship service from the Faith Ministry Center of Faith Lutheran Church. All the members of Faith Lutheran Church invite you to join us for any of our worship services. We would enjoy sharing the time with you. For ministry center locations, worship and education times, and other ministry opportunities, please visit our website at www.faithfoxvalley.org or call the church office at 920-739-9191. Any communication regarding this broadcast can be directed to Stephen Moore, Director of Worship Arts, Faith Lutheran Church, 601 East Glendale Avenue, Appleton, Wisconsin, 54911. Until we meet again, may the Lord bring you peace.
I invite you, as you are able, to please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, through the resurrection of Jesus, you have destroyed death and have sanctified the graves of all your saints. Receive our thanks for Christ's victory over death and the hope of a life everlasting. Keep us strong, fervent fervent faith, faith, and divine divine fellowship fellowship until until we all join together together with the hosts of heaven and sing their unending hymn through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you all with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.